So hello, everyone. Uh, the radio access or RAN market is really moving right now. Um, 5G, huge deployments underway all around the world and set to continue for the next few years. My research colleagues at Omdia put the uh, 5G as over 60% of the market in 2021, not set to peak through till 24 or 25. Um, we're here today to talk about Open RAN with guests from VMware. Kahia Networks, a startup, uh, and also Intel. And specifically, we're going to talk about the RAN Intelligent Controller, or RIC, uh, a really exciting part of the new disaggregated uh, network ecosystem. Uh, to start off, um, Stephen Spilisi from VMware. RAN is, as I said, really exciting. There's loads going on from a technology and deployment perspective. What is it that's kind of brought VMware to this, to this area, to this market? Thanks, Gabriel. Uh, the RAN, as you know, is undergoing some fairly major architectural shifts right now. And one of them is, you know, we're seeing more and more virtualization in the RAN. And essentially for the viewers, you know, RAN software is getting decoupled from the hardware and the underlying hardware, and it's being re-architected so it can just run on, you know, if you will, standard off-the-shelf hardware. This is sort of akin to um, NFE or network function virtualization for, for RAN. Second, the other big shift is that we're starting to see uh, the infrastructure be more software defined, such as the control plane and the management planes of the RAN software. They're getting decoupled from the data plane. And this is all being re-architected so it becomes more programmable, programmable by uh, third-party APIs. We look at this as being more software defined for the RAN. And as you know, VMware has been a pioneer in both NFE and SDN. The last piece I want to mention is that VMware it really is an enabler for Open RAN and the entire initiative, um, you know, which is from our perspective, nothing but virtual RAN and software defined RAN really together. And for us, it's, you know, what we're bringing to market and what's so disruptive is we're bringing a virtualization platform that's tuned and really geared towards the RAN. We're, this, our product is called the Telco Cloud Platform RAN, and it's software defined specifically for introducing that programmability. And this is coming forth in our RAN intelligent controller software, uh, which we're talking about today and is a part of the solution with Coherent Intel. Good stuff. We'll come back to, to, to the RIC and the ecosystem in a moment. But um, next, I wanted to turn to Ray Dolan at Kahir Networks. Ray, uh, Kahir's a, a startup, a technology startup in this area. Could you tell us, uh, first of all, a bit about the company and then some of the work you're involved with with operators in, the, in their labs or field trials? Sure, Gabriel. It's uh, nice to be here together with Stephen and Caroline. <clears throat> VMware and Intel have been two of our primary partners for almost two years now. Uh, Cohere is based in Santa Clara. Our focus is on 4G, 5G, 6G, wireless, and particularly right now on the spatial plane. What I mean by the spatial plane is beamforming or what people call MUMIMO. We've pioneered using delay Doppler, a new way to detect the channel state information and then to predict that forward. Now, the prediction is where it's really interesting because that's where we've moved that function together with VMware onto the RIC. That's, that's what Stephen was talking about with regard to not just virtualization, but the separation of the data plane and the control plane. So when we moved our solution into an XAP architecture hosted by VMware, that's where we've opened up this new notion of re-architecting re into the edge cloud. It's having a big, big impact. Um, so with regard to operators, uh, the three of us partnered almost a little over a year ago with Deutsche Telekom in Bonn which was concurrent with Mobile World Congress when it got moved off site in Barcelona. Uh, recently, we partnered for, uh, with Vodafone and uh, that announcement was made last week whereby they confirmed our spectral efficiency, almost doubling the capacity of the network with a path to getting further uh, in mid-band. We did that on the Intel FlexRAN architecture it proved that what Caroline and Intel built over the last decade is in fact the fundamental enabling COTS platform for an open architecture, right? And, and that it scales. And so when we did that on the Intel FlexRAN architecture and we moved the X apps to VMware, we created what you will, a distributed software defined network. And um, so we'll, we'll be in the DU in, in part with Intel and then probably in partnership with Intel, but primarily with RIC players like VMware, we'll be in the edge data center. That's, that's mm -hmm. what we've accomplished so far. Uh, we've got a lot of other trials going on. Uh, there'll be probably three in North America and uh, at least one in Asia PAC uh, going forward between now and the end of the year. 
Yeah, good stuff. Thanks, Ray. I'm going to come back to you again in a moment as well. But um, I'd like to comment on Vodafone. Now, we saw the release uh, recently, and another one since come out, a lot of momentum behind their Open RAM program. Um, Caroline Chan at Intel, you've, you've been involved, I guess, personally uh, and as Intel as a, as a company for a long time in Open RAM, put a lot of investment into it. How would you assess progress uh, as we stand today in the, the middle of 2021? I think uh, we're, we're on track to have a, a, a banner year. I think you guys have been predicting that this is probably uh, the year to really becoming a commercially uh, uh, deployed. We've seen you know, uh, Dish and, and Vodafone just made the announcement yesterday. And I think the, the group of five EU operated the announcement that really pushed the market open. And... In addition, you can't discount the software ecosystem that they, they really came together. The work that's done by VMware Cohere, it's the fundamental change, the value proposition of why we're doing open RAM versus the way that's always been done. And it's the, the innovation that these guys put together, it will ha would not have been possible if we stick to the old playbook and, and running the, the, the legacy way. But this is, this is so uh, invigorating to all, of, to all of us. And thanks to VMware and Cohere, the RIC architecture is fundamentally a game changer. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, and by the group of five, there you're talking about the five European operators who put a, right, a joint right. MOU in, in public there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's really it's really interesting. We've seen so many operators do something like some open front hall. Some others are doing VRAN. Some are doing uh, different bits of software control. But it's now starting to come together where the whole system, whether they launch this year or next year, but the whole the whole open RAN system and architecture is coming as a as a piece. Uh, yep. uh, very right. interesting. Um, yeah. I guess, um, Ray, taking up that, uh, Ray at Cahir, taking up that RIC point, this is a kind of a new function in the disaggregated RAN, if I can put it that way. Um, what is the, the, the RIC, and then I guess in general, in your application more specifically, what does that actually do for operators, uh, not in theory, but in kind of live service? What, what is the impact of it? Well, we think of, uh, I'll, I'll let Stephen speak to it as well, since they've actually built it at VMware, but we think of it as a hosting platform as opposed to a function. Uh, and we are one of the initial functions on their platform, and we're providing uh, spatial multiplexing and scheduling. So we've got actually two functions now running in XAP architectures, and they run across standard interfaces as they've been defined. I think it's called E2SM, uh, messaging interfaces in ORAN. So, and we'll publish those as we define them fully as we move further with various operators. So as we get hosted on that platform, uh, what we're able to count on is a stateful platform that will scale uh, in a containerized environment in an edge data center, or it can be left localized at a DU if in fact that's what operators want. Uh, and it may be that we'll see some combination of those two things as we move into more complex architectures. There'll be some applications that probably want some local uh, instances of some of the things that we do, but the vast majority of the bandwidth will will probably be processed with a control plane in the cloud. So that's what the RIC's doing. It most likely will add additional functions like AI, and there'll be other types of OSS, BSS that lives on top of that in a non-real-time RIC. So it's I think VMware will end up having a, a suite of uh, platform services that they can do to allow uh, what we think of as cloud RAN. Right. So it's mm -hmm. still going to be the RAN. It's not like the RAN is at the base station and then we're sitting in the cloud. What we're actually doing is now that the RAN has been virtualized, it's now being re-architected across an entire plane and the control plane and the data plane are being re-architected differently, most likely. Yeah. Okay. Good stuff, Ray. So Stephen at, at VMware, maybe to, 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 to build on the point there and, and, and take, up, take up Ray's offer, I guess. The um, you know the 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 Rick. One of the things it can do is run these different X apps and R apps. What are you doing to kind of expand that ecosystem and have you know, Kahir as a partner, but um, a platform would have many partners, right? If it's an open platform, how you how do you expect that ecosystem to expand? Gabriel, VMware is really aspiring to build a you know multi-vendor ecosystem all around X X apps and, and R apps. Um, we believe this will help us accelerate our innovation that happens in the RAN 
and that it's going to make designing RIC solutions easier. You know, we, we're developer friendly infrastructure. We built the developer experience right in the heart of our design. You know, we've done things like built a, a extensible SDK, which not only consists of, you know, documentation, but starter code and in API usage examples to just really make it easier for um, X app and our app vendors like Cohere to be able to adopt and deliver software technology in the RAN. Also, you know, we're, we have a, a certification workflow today, which we call Ready for Telco, and we intend to extend that to the X app and the R app uh, realm within the RIC and make it easier for app developers to get their software tested and then really certified and launched in, the, in, in our RIC. The last piece is we're designed, we're designed to be vendor agnostic. And we're inviting all the various RAN vendors in the ecosystem to partner, partner with us to work on the solution and really to help CSPs. That's the end of the you know, really, that's the end game, which is to help CSPs get more flexibility, better investment protection out of the RAN. Ultimately, that comes with more choice. And we believe the RIC is the right platform to extend the innovation and capability at that layer. It's a very costly, complex area, and we believe it's right for innovation. And our X app and our app, uh, app development is going to enable that kind of change in the marketplace. And partners like um, like Cohere are one example of that level of innovation that's happening today. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. And just to, to, to follow that up, I'll put the same question to Caroline uh, in a moment. But just to follow it up, Stephen, what's the... the um, Give us a, a sense of what the feeling is around the, the, the X app and R app developers. Where are they coming from? Are they coming out of, you know, traditional radio backgrounds? Are they coming out of open source software? You know, what, what, where's the where's the drive coming from? It's interesting. We're seeing a mix of enthusiasm come out of obviously the radio. You know, folks like Cohere have a particular legacy there and, and huge amount of uh, domain expertise. We're also seeing um, a re an emerging um, interest in security as well as analytics. And these are areas that can help, if you will, get more out of that in, that bit of infrastructure. You know, again, that most costly, complex, if you will, the most widely deployed part of the network, um, where you know we could see you know new use cases and capabilities, which will drive better economics, will, dr will drive better performance and scale. But at a minimum, security analytics, uh, performance in, is a huge area. And of course, you know, this first entree with Cohere, you're seeing, um, you know, 2x, uh, you know, additional uh, benefit in efficiency and performance, which is just stellar considering that, you know, one of the most costly parts of the network is the spectrum, right? Mm -hmm. Who wouldn't want 2x the spectrum? Yeah, good stuff. Right, I'll just bring you in quickly, actually. Um, how much kind of uh, let's take that all at face value. How much easier is it, you know, the the RIC and this new architecture making it for companies like yours to actually get, you know, a foot in the door with operators, get trialed and and ultimately deployed? Oh, it's enormous, uh, Gabriel. First of all, it's a commitment to openness. Uh, as Stephen said, you know, we've had a great partnership with Intel and VMware, and we committed to standardize our own interfaces between our solutions but do it in a consistent way with ORAN. So all of us are multi-vendor. Uh, mm -hmm. We could be multi-FI, multi-RIC, same with they could be multi-X app and, and, and Caroline's Intel Flex RAN is obviously multi-everything, including VRAN players like Mavenir and Altiostar, et cetera. So this is a commitment to openness and that's probably the primary thing that operators wanna see. They also wanna see scalability and the Intel FlexRAN platform already scales and VMware will demonstrate scale later this year as, as, as you'll see some, uh, some announcements as we go forward this summer. Uh, but, but that's really what they're looking for. And then they're looking for impact. Now you'd mentioned like, what's the value of the RIC? I just wanna stress one thing that we haven't really talked about much yet, but I think you'll see in the press from us and from others probably for the balance of this year. And that's the notion of network slicing into the enterprise. When you try to do that from the RAN, doing it from the cell site is highly inefficient, almost impractical. But when you move the intelligence from the base station into the edge cloud, that's literally the perfect place to slice the network because most of those edge data centers are already federated into the enterprise. So there's natural connectivity commercially, technically in every way. Right? So this is gonna open up and explode the notion of network slicing, mm -hmm. which was mm -hmm. one of the fundamental reasons to go to 5G. Yeah, a fantastic point. I mean, I think there's it's easy to talk about the network and architecture, but it's got to end up as something that's better for the customer and the user and right. how it actually makes a difference to, to to the people using the service, I guess. Agreed. Um, 
Caroline Linz, I wanted to, to, to bring you in, I guess, to close out the, the uh, Stephen and Ray both talking about commitment to openness and things. Um, your position at Intel, obviously, you're speaking to so many companies in, in Open RAN. Tell us a bit about um, how you manage these kind of these ecosystems and these partnerships and, and, and how working broadly will actually accelerate the ORAN timeline. Yeah, so the ecosystem is so important. Integration, uh, I think, like Stephen, you know, Steve brought up the pre-integration. We do a lot of work with VMware. We actually have a joint project together to uh, run pre-integration. We, when you disaggregate, sometimes you have to make it easier for people to put it back together. Uh, the work that we're doing with ORAN Alliance, I personally, obviously, uh, have been serving on a TIP board for a while. We see a huge role that TIP can play into this. Uh, ecosystem is so important to ORAN. At, at the end of the day, open RAN means that people come in and innovate. Uh, like um, Steve talked about what, what's going to sit on the SAP. Location is another one that we see a lot of interest mm -hmm. Uh, you, once you go into 5G, go into network slicing, go to enterprise, people want to know the location aspect of it. So we see uh, players coming from non-traditional radio uh, place. Um, Cohere is a very good example, right? Using very smart delay Doppler to really transforming the performance angle of it. Uh, the fundamentals built on a mathemat uh, mathematics. Uh, that kind of innovation we just didn't see before. When I was working in hotel many, many years ago when Ray was uh, uh, flaring on. So the thing that we are doing is so different than what we had before, but the key thing is ecosystem, building that together, make it easier to integrate, find a set of blueprints uh, that that like what we just uh, done together uh, really is, is key to move the open RAM forward. Okay, great stuff. Thanks, Caroline uh, Chan at Intel, Stephen Spilisi at VMware, Ray Dolan at uh, Cohere. Thank you, guys. It's our pleasure. Thank you. Thank you.